Hi, welcome to Jumping Into Solutions channel. I'm Pat Toa Smith and I'm here today with Kathy Carriage. Hi, Kath. Hi, Kath. And we're going to be talking about the new recycling law that went into effect in 2022. This new law is an expansive law that uh, requires you to compost much more than just fruits and vegetables. Things like animal product waste, things like bones and skin, and food scraps that are on paper and on uh, cardboard. Things that you get from the take out and also pizza boxes things like that and later on in the show we're going to have marie knudsen from republic services who's going to answer all those gray area questions like what can and can't be composted because there is a lot of gray there's things like milk cartons that people don't know what to do with or things with wax on it so in the meantime we're going to talk about how we both compost i compost with the bin that they gave us from uh, republic services this bin is really nice it's, it has a nice lid on it and i also can put in a compostable bag republic allows you to do that which is great so you could put in all your scraps and then you could press it down and tie it into a knot and then put it into your green bin um, some of the area recyclers do not allow you to use the compostable bag so you can use just plain paper bags as you can see this bag has been through a lot <laughs> and it is ready to be composted so you could put your stuff in here all your composted waste and then just fold it up and then put it into your green bin so now Kathy's going to talk about how she does it <laughs> yeah I use the same bin and for me this new law is fantastic because I've never been a I've always had to put all my animal waste before in uh into the garbage. Now I can put it in the green bin. I don't use any of the bags and things because I'm trying not to buy things. So I just dump it and then wash it. But I'm a gardener and if you like even house plants, uh, there are a couple other ways you can compost in your backyard that are pretty easy. Probably the easiest thing is a worm bin. And that's what we have right here. Wow. I just put my cut up food scraps in here. Uh, kitchen scraps. You can't put any, again, any animal products in anything like this. And then I just cover it up with leaves. Wow. And oh my gosh, I see worms already. <laughs> yeah. And you can see the partially, uh, you know, disintegrated food in here. And you can get a nice, see if I can get some nice oh, healthy worms for you to see. There is a lot of worms. Whoa. And then this <laughs> is fantastic fertilizer for your garden or your house plants. Wow. And as you can see, this is pretty little. It doesn't take up much space. I just put leaves on it that I get from my neighbors. And then if you put water through here or for the rains uh, I just came this was full this is called worm tea and that also is great fertilizer wow, it looks uh, like tea also yeah yeah it does look like and you tea. know your, your soil is so black I just oh it's yeah kind of it's amazing uh, it's great uh, on your uh, garden it's great mm -hmm. for your plants it's good for fruit trees and so I have a, a free compost here thank you Pat and Kathy for that very interesting video on composting, it certainly provides a good description of what people can do at their homes. Hello folks, this is Hari Lamba from the East Bay of San Francisco, and we are bringing you very interesting information on the benefits to you and your community of composting your green and especially food waste. Pat Toth Smith and I are interviewing Marie Knudsen, who is the Recycling Coordinator of Republic Services. So, Marie, California had taken the bull by the horns by passing Senate Bill SB 1383. With the implementation of the bill, the way we compost has changed, along with the frequency of pickups. Can you explain the changes? Absolutely. Uh, first, this law is one of the, the largest laws that have happened since the 90s. It's got a lot of intricate parts to it. And the first part, of course, is composting your organics. The compost is uh, organics, as they call it now. And that is all food, food soiled paper, and any, any kind of green waste. So again, your food, uh, meat, cheese, bones, eggshells, coffee grounds, coffee filters, the paper plates, pizza boxes, as you can see on the screen, all of that, all of it can go in your compost instead of in the trash, because we want to keep that out of the landfill. The landfills are filling up and it's also creating methane gas. So that is what organics is. Some of the changes, the very detailed changes in this 
new law, the SB 1383, is that you have weekly collection if instead of biweekly, if you had that when you had your yard waste picked up. Now that you're putting food in that green waste can, it needs to be picked up weekly. So that meant us adding a lot of routes and new drivers, uh, more trucks to be able to do the weekly collection. The second big change is how many times have you gone to another city and their carts are all different colors and you're not sure what to put where? What, maybe they have burgundy for trash and right now we have blue for trash. So that was very confusing. So now you, they have black or gray for your trash, blue for recycling, and green for your organics, which is your yard waste and your food waste. And that's going to be universal throughout the state of California. So if the city you're in had different color carts, to make it easier for right now, the lids will be the appropriate color. So look at the lid on your container for guidance of what to put where. Wow, thank you. Thank you, Marie. That is really great. Um, I, I appreciate the first slide when you were showing the different foods, but the the interesting thing is people are still very confused about what they can and can't be composted. It's kind of the biggest thing everybody <laughs> is concerned about. So can you, I mean, it's things specifically like milk cartons, uh, aluminum, uh, mm -hmm. if a scrap has aluminum on it can you where do you put that and also waxy like if you get takeout containers and they contain waxy uh kind of a film is that something that's composted could you please go over that a little bit more specifically sure uh there's a lot of things that are a little confusing and kind of in the gray area for uh for where to put it and and those are good examples. Anything that's waxy, it like a milk carton um, or sometimes uh, some of the uh, boxes that you might get food in or a, a con to go container. Since they're a waxy or a plastic bonded with a cardboard, we can't separate it. So that would have to go in the trash. And if you have a container, maybe a microwave container or a Starbucks cup or something like that, kind of a rule of thumb is, is it really shiny on one side? Because if it is, the compost can't break it down. Or can you tear it? If you can't tear it, then it's pretty solid and the compost can't break it down either. That means it's not going to go in your green bin it's going to go in the trash. And a couple other things that we want to keep out of the compost are any of the items that say they're compostable or made from sugar cane or corn or things like that. They're a hybrid. That means they've got plastic in them. So they can't go in the compost because it's got plastic in them. And they can't go in the recycling because they've got a food product in them. They do break down in the landfill faster, so we're grateful for that. But those kind of items are going to go in the trash, not in your your green organics container. Can and we add paper towels uh, that are used in restrooms? Uh, the paper towels would go in your compost, not Kleenex though. It's germy. We want that to go in the trash. And also pet waste is going to go in the trash. That's a big question I get a lot. I, I had another question about the same subject. Um, you know, there's a lot of times you'll have diseased greenery outside that, you know, uh, plants that have gone bad. Uh, are those acceptable for the compost bin? Yes, because the compost bin heats up pretty good. So it should kill any, if it's a small amount of like pests or a small amount of say a rose dust or something like that if it's really bad though i would say put it in the trash just so that someone else doesn't get that in their compost but again there's such a huge quantity of organics going to the facility that it pretty much ends up a small minute part 
mm -hmm. and the acidity and the heat from the the facility will kill it. Wow. Okay, that's really amazing. Thank you. I have one more uh, question. Uh, my for another question: Where does all the new composted trash go, and how is it being used? It's for us. It's going to our Richmond facility, our Golden Bear facility, and they have a huge area where uh, there's huge piles, aerators underneath it, a good layer on top so the smell doesn't get out. It gets very hot and they let it cure for about five to six weeks and then they move it to another area where they keep a good eye on it to make sure that it's turning into some black gold that I can bring back to you for your own gardens. Um, I do two compost giveaways a year in Benicia. Uh, most of the cities do some kind of program like that, but check with your hauler and they can guide you for when their next one is. Mm. Well, thank you. That's Good. really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Great, Marie. Um, I had a question regarding uh, these gases, uh, which are uh, a primary concern about these, especially like methane getting emitted from regular landfills, if food waste and green waste make it into the regular landfills. Um, what gases are emitted uh, from landfills before uh, this new expansive composting goes into effect? And uh, how is that going to benefit us, uh, you know, from an environmental and climate standpoint? <clears throat> well, that's a great question. The landfills are one of the super polluters. They're causing 21% of what's out there in the, in the atmosphere. And it's the methane gas that is from the food waste and that breaking down in the landfills. And they found that there's about 50% of the landfills is green waste and food waste. So getting that out of the landfills is really important to help with climate change. Uh, the methane gas is 84 to 86 times more potent than carbon dioxide from our cars. So we definitely want to participate in the program. Another advantage of Cal Recycle, which is a state agency that came up with this law to help pass it, is getting all of this food waste out of the landfill. The, the question is, why is it going there in the first place? So if there's edible food, we want to make sure that that goes to people that are in need because uh, quite a few people are food insecure and a lot of the farms don't sell the imperfect fruits or vegetables. So what we wanna make sure that we're working with these places to get food out to people if it's edible and then make sure the food any food waste goes or edible food goes to people first, animals second, and composting third. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I, I guess I during your slide, I was pretty um, taken with the 84 to 86% um, uh, methane being more powerful than um, than the regular greenhouse gas, you know, the, the carbon gases. So that's pretty impressive. Um, it, it, what is the goal for California with this new law? I, I, is it 70% they're trying to reduce it? Or um, can you speak a little bit more about, about that? Sure. So in 2020, uh, before that, we started working with commercial businesses with SB, excuse me, AB 1826 and working with uh, commercial accounts to have them put their food waste in a separate container. We were trying to get to 50% out of the landfill of the or getting the organics out of the landfill. It didn't happen. So with SB 1383, now we have to get to 75% of the organics out of the landfill by 2025. We're already in 2023. That's a big goal. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's amazing. This is so good. I, I just, um, I know in my house, we, we went from one compostable uh, three gallon uh, compost a week to about four. So oh. yeah, yeah, isn't that amazing? That's I, great. Yeah, so, so it just shows you 
you know, just one little household, how big of a change it's going to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so thank I've, you. I've been religiously, um, you know, uh, putting all the food waste in uh, compostable bags and putting them in the green bin and uh, exhorting my neighbors to do the same. So uh, I think this uh, would be great. Um, um, in your view, what's uh, the overall um, um, benefit of doing this uh, activity, both from the viewpoint of agriculture as well as, uh, you know, uh, as well as reducing the uh, methane emissions? Um, there's there's so many benefits uh, by by putting it in your green waste cart instead of in the trash. You're reducing the methane gas and you're turning something into a wonderful compost that can come back and feed the soil, uh, have better plants, better trees, better gardens, uh, better fruit. So it's a full circle thing. Um, Also by not using your garbage disposal, you're saving water. And we're of course keeping the methane gas out of the atmosphere so that we can fight climate change and using that edible food instead of tossing it because it's easier is going to feed a lot of people. So we're helping businesses set up where they can send that food to. So that's another full circle. Let's use that food for people first, animal second, composting third again. Yeah, yeah. So please, folks, uh, do not throw your food waste into regular garbage uh, and ask restaurants and grocery stores to stop doing so, so that it does not get to regular landfills and keep emitting, Mm -hmm. trapping methane. Now, methane has a lifetime of about 12 years in the atmosphere and about 20 Mm -hmm. in the 20 year period, it traps 84 times more heat than carbon dioxide. So it's uh, important that we start doing a bit and it gives us benefits like Marie is saying for good compost manure, fertilizer, or good organic farming, which improves your food. So thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Marie. You had some last words, Pat? Yeah, I just want to thank Marie and uh, everything that Republic Service is doing it, uh, doing. And I just wanted to um, thank you too for showing us the lid, the different lids, and how things are going to change. Because you know, when I go to different areas and eat out or go away for a few days, I'm always holding the, my garbage, going, "Where am I going to? You know, which one should I fit <laughs> in?" So you really cleared things up for me, and I just want to say thank you again. We appreciate having you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Happy to help.